Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching my exploration of the wide world of pens. I appreciate your viewing, and I love comments. A number of viewers asked me to review this pen, and I was reluctant in the beginning to do it, and then it seemed to disappear, and then it came back, and I said, ah, I need to take a look at it, and the price was reasonable. Here's the auction. Delivery was relatively quick, which is nice. And as we slip the pen out, we'll see it's the brass Moonman T1. Yes, there was a uh, plastic cellophane wrapper that the pen was in inside of that velvet pouch. First thing you notice from the pen is it's a heavy pen, and that cap is really a good contributor to the weight of this pen. We'll give you the weights. And it unscrews, and a lot of turns. I'll count them later and tell you. And yes, I have swapped a nib. We'll talk about that later in the video, why I did that. Came with that standard silver Moonman fine nib, which writes more like a medium. I mean, from an aesthetics viewpoint, I like the pen. I also like the aluminum ones, which we'll look at later. And unposted, this pen fits fine. That section feels great. It's a little bit more slippery than I would like, but not much more slippery than you would get with a nice piece of a polished acrylic. And yes, you can post it. It doesn't post at all deeply, and that cap just really backweights the pen. So it's not something that I would do, <clears throat> but for those that must post, you could post the pen. So we're going to explore this pen, and we're going to see how that interesting nib writes a little later. I've gotten rid of the LED lights and we're just using some uh, diffused sunlight coming in because I want to bring in the LED to look inside the cap and as we do that we'll see a plastic liner. So those threads are plastic in the cap which probably allows it to post the way that it does without having brass on brass and potentially you know marring or marking that line cap. So as we play the LED over this uh, antique-like finish on the brass, you know, take a close look at that interesting insert into the top of the cap. That's the cap. So I've disassembled the T1 brass. I basically wanted to make certain I could pull the nib and feed out, which I did. It's a screw-in nib assembly, and I have a bunch of those so I could easily unscrew and screw in, but these are Moonman nibs, so I could put a gold tone nib replacing the silver tone, which I think aesthetically might be nicer. But in looking through my number six nibs, I've come across this one, which has been ground to a left oblique, you can see how that uh, tipping material is ground and there's a little slight angle that when you look at the nib from the front, it slopes to the left, which is why they call it a left oblique. And this is also geared more towards right-handed writers who would generally hold the nib at an angle like this. So <clears throat> let's reassemble, ink up, and see how it writes. So when I showed you the pen disassembled, I didn't go through the exercise of removing this piston mechanism, which you can do. There's that flat, faceted piece there that you slip a very thin wrench over. Unfortunately, it's not a Pelican size. I, I'm thinking of modifying uh, one of my Twisby wrenches to fit this. I have to open it up. And then this would unscrew and you could take it apart. But these pistons work extremely well. And at this time, I'm 
not encourage to just take it apart for the sake of taking it apart, but if I need to, I know I can. Yes, Moon Man made an anodized aluminum version of this pen. They're all called T1s. This one has been inked up and consistently in use since the day I got it. And I enjoy the Moon Man nib. The uh, anodized aluminum ones have Moon Man painted on the cap. Or the brass one has no identification. That's a little bit of a difference. They all have that Moon Man logoed insert into the top of the cap. And the blind cap is basically just a simple blind cap. The same material as the cap and section as they slide around. So I enjoy this design. Yeah, it looks like Fine Writing International and Opus and a few other companies. But this is what I would call a classic design where you have a clear, transparent barrel varying filling mechanisms and then a cap and blind cap and section which are made of the same material. So when I did my review of the Moon Man Retro Brass Pocket Pen, I had one of those old guy moments where I'd forgotten about this brass version of that same pen, which I really enjoyed also, and it has a knurled finish which I thought was a nice touch, just like I like this retro finish. The brass finish that they've used on the T1 is, is much different. It's back to that lacquered style, which I think is okay, but it doesn't really let you experience the metal of the pen. Kind of seals it up. No metal smell with the T1 like you get with these more <clears throat> pure metal pens. But that's just to look at the different types of finishes you can get. Brass is a great material. I'll give you reviews of those other two Moon Man pens. I'll give you links in the description, as, long, as well as links to the T1s we showed you earlier. So in designing this piston filler, it stops there. As you can see, there's a little bit of a break there and yes I was going to be filling this but I decided I needed to stop to show how this works. So basically when you do your first fill there's going to be a lot of air drawn up before the ink is drawn up so as you draw it up there's going to be air left over so what I do is I turn it right side up knock it to get that out turn the piston back up and expel as much air as possible so then when I bring the piston back up we got pretty much a full fill. I also go up and down three times and sometimes that also pushes out the air but why did they design that? I think they wanted that to be a hard stop. I think they wanted to make certain that that piston didn't get stuck down there and also there's only so much of that screw assembly that they can have there to give you that piston travel, but that's probably about a good amount of travel as you're going to get in a pen this size. So that's the first draw. So we're going to go up and down two more times, and I like to, again, flush and saturate and everything else, and we'll see how much of that air we can get rid of. That's how much of a fill I got going up and down three times, and coming up very, very slowly on that last fill, there's still a little bit of air got trapped in there, but not much. So we're all set to write. I like to have an ink call out to me when I'm inking up a new pen for the first time. So this ink can't call out to me. I think it's a really nice color to complement that retro antique finish on the T1. The chromatography is very interesting. We see a really large combination of colors there from pinks to reds to greens to yellows to blues. You know, to me, looking at that chromatography, I could never guess that that's the color of the ink. You know, chromatography really separates the different pigments that were used, the different dyes that were used in, in making the ink, and this one is certainly a complex one that I'm glad they made. So for the writing part of this review, 
I'm going to compare the ground nib that I put into the brass T1 with the original Moonman fine nib that was in this T1 and also this uh, Moonman fine nib that's in the C1. I want to talk about the differences between these three nibs from my writing experiences and help give you some idea of how you might enjoy these nibs. Yes, I did get some new pen rests, and these are from Tiltwell, the 3D printed ones, and I really like the colors, so I have something new to show off my pens. So before we put nib to paper, let's talk a little bit about this particular T1. So in the scheme of things, this is a very, very heavy pen. 60 grams is heavy, I think, no matter who you are or how you write. And that cap really is more than half of the weight is in that cap. So it certainly throws the balance off quite a bit. And it does take two and a half turns to get the cap off, which is a little bit more than it should, but eh, I can live with it. I like the shape and size of this pen. I enjoyed the aluminum versions of these. And without the cap, the weight feels fine. It's nice and balanced. And I'm not even going to show you it posted because it's, it's not something I would do. I love that size of the section. I love the length. Those threads are not sharp. There's no, you don't feel any step up there between that brass section and this uh, acrylic barrel. So overall, from an ergonomics viewpoint, uncapped and unposted, I think this pen works extremely well. We'll give you the lengths and we'll show you the length posted just to put it in perspective. Now let's put nib to paper. So in writing with the T1 with the left oblique, which as you can see, originally I was calling it a cursive italic in this writing because that nib grind to me is very similar. The left oblique is not quite as sharp as a normal italic, and it does have an angle to it, which a cursive italic does, and it's a little rounded, so they are very similar, except... As I mentioned in my look at this nib, is this nib has that angle that slopes in this direction. And a cursive italic is pretty much usually kind of like this. So it's kind of rounded. And I think a lot of it has to do with how the tipping material that touches the paper has a flatness to it and that kind of gives you some character to your writing which I enjoy. The nib requires a little bit of practice to use uh, consistently. It's wet, no question about that and I think the 
bronze ink works well in this pen. And just for comparison, I did the T1 and C1, which have a standard Moonman nib. And I did write it twice because I didn't turn on the camera when I wrote the first one, so kind of and defeats the purpose. But I think as you watched the video of the writing, uh, this C1 nib is really nice. It's the best um, Moonman standard fine steel nib that I have. And both this one and the T1, you can leave them set for many weeks and uncap and they write first time every time. They're very consistent writers, very consistent ink flow. So why would I do a cursive vitalic or a left oblique? Sorry, I made that mistake again. I think you can see from that writing that this is bland writing. This writing has some character to it. It has some line variation based on how you're writing with that nib as you change upstrokes, downstrokes, and cross strokes, you're going to get some variations. It's built into the way the, the nib is ground. This has a standard round tipping material to it. So would I want every nib to be ground? No. So this nib is great for writing letters or writing in a journal where you just take your time writing and you enjoy the feel of the nib on the paper. These are great everyday carry nibs where you just want to write. You want to write without thinking about it. And if you kind of rotate the pen or whatever, you still want the pen to write well and feel well on the paper. And, and these nibs accomplish that. And I do enjoy these nibs for that reason, but it still doesn't mean I can't enjoy something with more character to it. Hopefully you found that interesting. Let's compare these two nibs a little bit more closely. The one on the top is the one that's ground is a left oblique. And the one at the bottom is that Moonman fine nib that's in the C1. You can see the way that that tipping is ground flat on the bottom. And I, I think that's one reason why it creates that characteristic writing that I like. Yeah, and, and to me, part of exploring pens is exploring grinds on nibs. And I'll give you the link to the gentleman, Mike, who ground this nib for me. He sells a lot on eBay, at least uh, he seems to, so I'll give you the link to his eBay store also. And I think he does a good job, and, and he's uh, very reasonably priced. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You know, I explored the pen, compared it to other pens, and definitely did some explorations of nibs. So, and nibs to me are the reason why we buy pens, is to have something to put our nibs into and to use to have a reservoir of ink that uh, is a controlled spill out through the nib onto some paper of some sort. I wish you all are safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, enjoying writing, enjoying everything. Yeah, that's what I try to do. It's the end of this video. I'm going to say bye until the next video. Ah, nice combo. And you must keep the nib on paper at the right angle. Difficult to do over the tripod.